Good morning, Paris. Oh, I'm sorry, I interrupted your breakfast. All right, you, you go back and eat. All right, we are here. Good morning, or I should say good morning. Good morning, welcome back to my channel. It's me, Steven. Welcome to Vlogtober Day 24. Um, feeling a little groggy. I woke up a little later than I thought I would, uh, but the silver lining to that is that I slept a good solid eight hours, which I don't remember the last layover. I slept like a complete night, so. A big win. Um, we have a longer day than I thought we would have today. I thought it was an easy one, but we are doing Oakland, LA, Austin, LA. So it's a, it's a long day, but good crew. Yeah, we'll make it, we'll do it. Let's get out of here. Okay, so what's worse than being randomed? When KCM takes 15 minutes to show up, and then when they finally get there, the system is down. So there must have been 14 of us in line. Uh, so we all had to go through KCI and uh, TSA. Yay! At least it just wasn't me this time. It was everybody. Fun, fun, fun. Hey guys, hi. So we're in Oakland still. You know when those beautiful summer days, you're walking down the sidewalk, there's a slight breeze, the sun is shining on your face, you're having a beautiful time, and then your face walks right through a cloud of gnats. Little teeny things that really aren't very substantial, but they're still irritating when they all happen at once. <laughs> That's what this morning has been like, yeah. Um, nothing big, nothing big, nothing traumatic. It's just, let's get out of here. You know, like KCM was down after 15 minutes of waiting for KCM, so we all had to go through TSA. Um, our, um, the gate agent is battling a whole bunch of people who are very unpleasant out there. So that kind of spills over into the edge of the plane here. Um, it just, uh, yeah, lots of little teeny things, but nothing of any real consequence. So there's that. Um, do I ever not complain in a video? I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to today. We have, again, once again, great crew. Uh, I'm anticipating fantastic passengers because Austin's awesome and the passengers are great. So, yeah. All right. Let's get this day started and uh, finished, right? Hey, guys. We're in L.A. Uh, and now that all that little irritations, those little gnats, all that dust has settled, I've discovered it was a really nice flight. Really, really nice time. My chaser and I are really get getting along beautifully. I didn't think we were doing a great job together the first day but I, I don't know we just we weren't on the same page or something she's going through a lot I'm not so you know whatever but today we're, we're talking and in my back of my head I'm thinking I really like her <laughs> like we really I like if we think very much alike so I'm really really enjoying I'm really enjoying my chaser we're having a nice time um and the best of my rest of my crew you know I love them we had a great time yesterday so no complaints really nice passengers Really nice passengers. Um, yeah, there you go. That's it. We're in LA. We got 147, 145 passengers going to LA with us. Uh, flight time is going to be two hours and 28 minutes. Yeah, that's it. Freshly catered. So we're poised to have another nice flight. All right, let's get out of here. Let's go to, um, to Austin. Ta-da! I made it to Austin. Um, amazing flight. Really nice flight. Our passengers were flawless. Flawless. We had a big handful of people joining us from our last flight, and they were just really a joy. Uh, and all of them have flown quite, quite a bit today, you know, for a regular passenger. And they still all had really, really great attitudes and behavior. Fantastic. Uh, my crew's great, of course. My chaser... I think I said it earlier today. I just don't think we were on the same page yesterday. Mostly because she's going through a lot of challenging things uh, lately. But, um, you know, she she and I just had the best connection today. Amazing conversations. I think they're only kind of conversations like middle-aged people can have with each other. You know, just real honest. Uh, and uh, just a real, real treat. Really good time. Uh, we have roughly two hours here in Austin. Uh, so I chose to get off the plane to use the little boys room, of course, and maybe grab some hot food, maybe a hot coffee. This airport is spectacular. That's pretty fantastic. Got, uh, you know, Starbucks, of course, 
really fun shops. Uh, and you hear the music behind me. There is actually live music happening at this hamburger joint. I mean, really fantastic airport. I grab a bite to eat. Again, use a little boy's room. And why do I feel the need to always tell you when I have to go to use a little boy's room? I don't know. You've probably recognized that. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it's a good day so far. So uh, I will see you later on. I mean, look at this. It's uh, like fake food trucks. And there's literally a stage with musicians playing. And this is an airport. This is like a travel destination. How awesome is this? Love this. Oh, excuse me, honey, I'm sorry. All right, so of course I brought food with me to eat on the plane, but I couldn't resist this pizza. Apparently it's like Formula One or something here, which might explain why it's so busy, but this place is packed. I got one hour and then on to LA. So uh, yeah, let's go. Just checking to see if I have uh, pizza in my mustache. I think I'm good so far. Um, I just had the most amazing interaction with um, a fellow traveler here in the airport. I had stopped for pizza. It was very busy, there was nowhere to stand. So she invited me to share her table. And she was an older woman, probably in her mid 70s. But she reminded me a little bit of Diane Keaton. If you know her hairstyle, just really classic, on point, dressed beautifully. And um, we just had the most amazing, amazing conversation about, gosh, I mean, really everything. We spoke to it for probably a half hour about finding, how would I describe it? How to find magic in your, as you get older, satisfaction as you get older and the things that change. We really had, a, it was like metaphysical kinds of conversation, really satisfying, unbelievable. She uh, is moving from Texas to Kansas City because she says, I think I'm young enough to still have an adventure. And um, I mean, we really just had a fantastic conversation. I'm, I'm sure I'm not making much sense now, but it was a real high point of the day so far. So this has been a very nice day. I'm gonna head back to my gate, get comfortable, maybe close my eyes for a few minutes, and then I'll be on the way to uh, LA. What a nice day, what a nice day. <sighs> All right, so I survived that flight from Austin to LA. It wasn't as bad as all that, but it was still a lot more work than I was used to because the first two legs were so easy. This, The last one, eh, I'll tell you about it in a minute. Uh, but first, let's do a quick hotel room tour because I friggin' love this hotel room. It's like my favorite hotel room. Uh, let's start with the bathroom. We've got a very nice sh uh, shower. The wallpaper makes me think of a nice Goyard tote bag. Doesn't that look like a Goyard tote? Um, nice wide vanity, which is very nice. There's a little coffee section here. There is a smart fridge. The last fridge I had like that was not very smart, but we'll see what happens. I don't have a lot of food to keep, co uh, keep cold. Uh, the TV, very nice. I love this little section here. I love this table. I love the chairs. I love this mirror, which is ultra fantastic. I love that mirror. This little seating area with that real textured pillow. How cool is that pillow? It's very nice. I love that pillow. Isn't that cool? Um, love the lighting. Love the headboard. Love the king size bed. So that's pretty cool. Uh, the view is, as you can see, a big giant parking lot, but, you know, at least it's not another hotel room looking at me. <gasps> well, I don't know what hotel that is, but look at that pool. Look at that pool. That's a very nice pool. It's a beautiful day for a pool. But I did not bring a bathing suit, uh, and there's people in the pool, and they trust me, they don't want to see me with my shirt off. So um, I am going to... Um, peel this uniform off my body and then throw some food in my uh, Sabbath heat because there is no microwave and I don't want to go all the way back downstairs to heat food up. So I might get that food heated up uh, in the Sabbath heat and then I'll stop back with you and tell you about my trip today. And that'll be the end of day 24. See you in a minute. Hey guys. All right. So I'm in my room. I've stripped off most of my uniform. Whew. 
so much better. Um, in the bathroom, I have my Sabot heat heating up with my uh, Stojo silicone bowl that I'm in love with. Inside that, I've got some chili, some pre-cooked elbow macaroni, and some cheddar cheese. I'm gonna set that to level five for about 90 minutes. I'm hoping it gets hot enough that I can stir that all up. The cheese will melt and I'll have some sort of like chili mac. So that'll be yummy. Um, it is <clears throat> 6 17 in the evening. My van tomorrow is at 6 a.m. So that's plenty of time to eat and sleep and, you know, just futz around online, watch some YouTube videos. Um, so the last leg of the day um, was, in most cases, I would have considered it a huge success, wonderful passengers who, for the most part, behaved. But the one complaint I will have about today is... Um, there was a fair amount of turbulence. There was a, there was a huge storm sort of uh, north of Austin, but it spread all the way up into the middle of the country. And the turbulence was pretty significant. It wasn't the worst turbulence of my career, but it was bad. And um, I, I uh, you know, our job is to be an informer, not an enforcer. So I can't stop you from using the bathroom. I really can't. I can encourage you to remain in your seat because it's not safe to be here on the, in, you know, walking around the cabin. But um, I do ask you, as I'm supposed to, to remain seated with your seatbelt fastened until the captain deems it safe for you to move around the cabin. So that's not a time to just casually get up and go to the bathroom and pee, especially when you've had multiple opportunities to use the lavatory. Um, so if you can already sense my growing irritation as I even tell the story, I felt like a mother of like 50 children who just couldn't get it into the head that there was a time to do something and a time not to do something. Uh, and so I, I try really hard not to use my mother's voice when it comes to like, everybody, please have a seat. But there were a couple times where there were multiple, multiple, like five or six people up and moving in the cabin when I had my harness on, I had my, my flood attendant harness on because it wasn't safe. Um, and um, so I had to kind of use my mother's voice. Folks, I love you very much. I always throw that in there. I love you very much, but it is not safe to move around the cabin at this moment. Please return to your seat and buckle your seatbelt. Ta-da! Some of them didn't listen and uh, went in the back and um, if you know the A320 in the way that our airline configures it, uh, on the aircraft left, which is on the right-hand side for us, there's a jump seat facing the lavatory. And it's about this far from the lavatory door. You're literally staring at the door. And if someone has to go into the lavatory, you have to get out of your jump seat, stand up and, and step aside so that someone can get in there. Normally not a huge problem, sometimes a minor irritation, but never a huge problem. Until today, the turbulence was bad enough. It was not safe to be in a cabin walking around, not even for a flight attendant, never mind a passenger. Um, and so um, people were getting up, making my flight attendant position B get out of his jump seat a number of times when it wasn't safe to be up and about. And I was getting really irritated, trying my best to modulate my voice so I didn't sound like well, my mother, because um, she was an animal. But um, I did say, folks, I, I have to ask you to please remain seated. Unless it's a desperate emergency, please remain seated. When you uh, anybody gets up and makes my coworker move out of his jump seat, they're putting him in danger and the people around him. And I actually was brought to the point where I had to say this which is the first time in like almost six years of working as a flight attendant, I had to pull this tone out and it was unpleasant for me. I did try to add a couple little, you know, sweet, I love you. Remember, you know, um, whatever, we're all friends here. Um, it was just very frustrating. It was really, really frustrating. It's one of the things that I still, it still bothers me. When you're brand new as a flight attendant, like your first six months, you're like the police. You will sit down. You will not. <laughs> and then you realize, you know what? I'm just, an, I'm just an informer, not an enforcer. I've told you that it's not safe to be here on the cabin. You know, there you go. Uh, but if you, uh, after this video, after this video, if you go into the internet and Google 
turbulence. There was recently, just in the last week or so, a flight from Spain to Barcelona. And when you hear these stories about turbulence, for some reason, not, I'm sorry, Spain to uh, Brazil. If you look at these stories, it's always cross across the Atlantic heading to Brazil. I don't know why, but these stories always happen. But it was a, a, a flight from Spain to Brazil and there was extreme turbulence for people in the cabin. You know, the plane can handle it, but there was significant turbulence. And I think like a dozen people were thrown out of their seat so hard as to damage the fuselage of the aircraft. There were people with broken noses, blood all over them. It's not safe to be up and around in the cabin when the seatbelt sign is turned off, especially when the plane's rocking and rolling and you see the flight attendants, can you hear how frustrated I am? When you see the flight attendants sitting in their jump seats with their with these harnesses on, it's not safe to be around the cab, like walking around, especially, oh my goodness, especially, especially, if you're old or if you have little children. One time a, a mother was bringing her little teeny kid to the bathroom in this in this turbulence. And I mean, I was like, my brain was convulsing. I was so frustrated. It's not safe. <sighs> but um, yeah, so I, I really had to do my utmost to not sound like a total jerk when I was making my announcements, but I had to make a couple announcements that were like real, you know, like, please, people will get injured, <laughs> whatever. But, but, but silver lining, if that's my biggest problem, hello, my life is fantastic. Uh, and uh, I was still feeling sort of jubilant from my experience with that lovely lady at the Austin airport. I mean, so she really saved the day, but um, yeah, that's been the day, that's been the day. It's been a good one. It's been a long duty day with a total of um, seven uh, hours in flight. So it wasn't a, a lightweight day, but it wasn't the worst ever. Blah, blah, blah. I'm really not giving you any new information. I'm just like rambling now because I'm over, I'm too hungry. So um, yeah, I'm going to let you go. Thank you so much for joining me today for Vlogtober Day 24. I will see you tomorrow. Uh, we are going to be flying. We have another fairly long day with only four credits of flying. We're going to be flying from here to, I think, to Las Vegas, Oakland, back to Las, I don't know. We have four legs tomorrow. So ugh. um yeah, that's it. Blah, blah, blah. Let me let you go. I will see you tomorrow. Bye. Fly safe.